in heated moments, you can look to your spouse and you can say, I love you, I trust you, but I'm gonna need some time to process this alone. Thank you for joining us for the Blended Kingdom Families podcast. This podcast is for blended families, the people who love them, and anyone who just wants to improve their marriage and family relationships. BKF exists to break the cycle of divorce, equip marriages, and unite blended families with the truth of God's word. It is our hope that today you will receive biblical guidance and practical resources that will bring unity and peace to create your thriving, healthy home. Let's jump in. Hey guys, welcome back to the BKF podcast. We are, we're pumped that you're here today. Uh, if you haven't, take an opportunity, like, share, comment, leave us a review. We'd love to hear from you. So if you're in our blended family community and you listen to our podcast a lot, we'd love to hear from you. You can leave a review on our Apple podcast. Yes. You can leave a review on this video if you're watching on YouTube. Um, but we'd love to know if it's encouraging you or any topics that you would love to see us cover on the podcast. Yep. And today we're going to talk about one of the words that we should not say in marriage, the one that is probably the most toxic word that we can use, which is the word divorce. The big D. Yeah. And we're not talking about Dallas. We ain't talking about Dallas. We're not talking about Dallas. Yeah, you guys, um, you know, and just, I just want to share a little bit about yeah. my past and just the word divorce and having gone through divorce. You know, I remember having, you know, just been married only three months and getting into an argument with my ex-spouse. And I remember... Mm. Um, hearing the words, well, we should just get a divorce then. And I think I, re I knew at that time, I, there was something just within my heart. I was like, I knew that, um, that that wasn't going to work. And so um, I think the power of, of even just mentioning or having that as an option, that immediately becomes a weapon that the enemy uses, not only for the person who is speaking it, but I think for the person that they are speaking it to, um, it then puts something in their mind or in their heart that becomes mm. something that is played over and over again. It's then been something that's now laid on the table as an option. Yeah. You know? And I remember, you know, even we had gotten into an argument, you know, it was like in the first year of our marriage. And I remember we were yeah. sitting in my office and we kind of come in and it was a little somber and cause I knew we were going to talk about what was bothering both of us. And, yeah. and we, and you said something like, you, you don't want to get divorced, do you? Or something to that no, nature. I said, I, I thought you wanted to get divorced. And so I, I remember going to your office and the whole way there in my mind, I was playing out how this conversation was going to go because we were just in a really rough spot. We had yeah. just had, um, our first son together. Mm. Michael was about uh, nine years old, eight, nine mm. years old at this time. And it was rough. We were beginning yeah. to blend our family. It was really rough. And I just remember driving to your office and the whole time thinking, okay, I'm going to be a single mom again. I need to make sure I'm doing this. I need to make sure I do that mm -hmm. and was just anticipating this. I want a divorce. And I remember going to your office, sitting across from you. And that's what I said. I was like, so how do you want to do this? I know you want to get a divorce and your response. I, I just remember seeing your face. Yeah. It just really fail. And you, it took you a moment, but I remember you saying, you know, I didn't marry you with the option of getting divorce. And, mm -hmm. and we had this conversation of, you know, I know that things are rough right now, but just, Scott has this saying, he's like, he's, you know, you, you hear the, you know, come high or, you know, water, um, we're in it <laughs> together. But I remember you saying we're on the ship together and whether the ship is floating and we're traveling the world together or it's sinking, he was like, we're going to be on it together until the very end. And so, um, you know, just sharing a little bit, yeah. you know, about that. I think, um, I think a lot of people just to be completely transparent and vulnerable have moments in their marriage where you're in such a rough spot. That, that it comes to your mind and it comes to your heart. And, and we can openly say that that's been there for both of us. Yeah. Like we've, we've been in rough seasons where we've had conversations of, you know what? And just being honest, like, yeah, the thought of divorce has come to my mind, but it's not an option. Yeah. When you, when you rule it out as an option, you start to understand that every problem can be solved. Yeah. Um, and that you, you know, even though you have rough seasons and, you know, we're no different than everybody else. I mean, we, yeah. we have arguments, we have disagreements, we have emotional arguments, we hurt each other's feelings. I mean, th these are no, we're not sitting here as the perfect married couple nope. uh, or ha had the perfect blended family. But the difference between the two is that you look at every problem and you say, you know what, this is a rough season. Um, we need some help, but we're going to figure out a way through this. Yeah. We're going to figure out the solution to this because, um, you know, 
as a couple, we come back together. We come back together because of, of the, uh, the foundation we have, because of our relationship with Christ, because of we understand yeah. the concepts of forgiveness, and we want to practice those. Uh, but I want to read Proverbs uh, twelve eighteen. It says, There is one whose harsh words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. And I think about that verse, and I think about sometimes the Bible is so descriptive. <laughs> you know, I mean, oh, yeah. really, you know, you, that, it wasn't like the, the harsh tongue is like a slap on the wrist. It was the harsh tongue is the sword thrust um, that kills people. Yeah. It, it can kill a relationship, it can kill a marriage. Yeah. But the tongue of the wise brings healing. Mm-hmm. So that is especially true in marriage. So uh, even in the heat of conflict and disunity, the word divorce really needs to be off the table because it can be a massive and emotionally laden bomb in your spouse's lap. Yeah. You know, what kind of feeling or action, you know, that we're trying to elicit when we throw out their words, it, it, it's, it's harm. It can be manipulation. Yeah. Um, you know, when we're using the word divorce to get something that we want or to intentionally hurt our spouse, you guys, we are doing so much more than that. Yeah. I mean, in essence, like Scott said, you know, the, the, the harsh words are, are that sword. I mean, imagine that going, penetrating their heart. I mean, that is, you know, to throw that word out there, it can cause so much more damage than you ever thought or ever meant it to just by saying it in the heat of, in the heat of a moment. So um, you know, out of frustration, it can be hard to come to a resolution. Mm-hmm. So, so maybe we say that, um, or, you know, it sometimes it seems like it's the only answer. Maybe it's our default go-to word because of our past, you know, previous marriage or past relationships or past situation. Mm-hmm. Um, so anytime, you know, in our new marriage, uh, in our relationships, when you come together from the beginning and you establish a foundation on Christ and you say, Hey, these are going to be some words that we, we, we mm-hmm. are not going to use. So as a family, one of the words that we do not use and that we've taught our boys is the word hate. Yeah. Um, it is very strong word and it's just a word that, that we don't allow them to use. Yeah. Um, and, and just like Scott and I, in our marriage, you know, we don't allow each other to use the word divorce, um, anytime that we're, you know, mm-hmm. in an argument or we have a disagreement. And so, you know, regardless of the reason throwing divorce into the conversation can do serious damage. Yeah. And it, you know, you may be thinking, well, you know, it's something I learned before and it's the word that I use to, you know, get the response that I need because fear is a strong motivator. Sure. Um, and, and, and what I'm trying to, and what we're trying to convey in that is you may get your answer short term yeah, because people out of fear will react in a certain way. And that may be the reaction you want, but it's not the healthy foundation. It's not the way that your marriage is going to sustain over time. Mm-hmm. So those words have extreme power. And again, and I also want to talk to you before I go into kind of the, 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 the opposite of that, I want to just, you know, I know a lot of people may not say it and they think it, Mm -hmm. you know, that's one thing they're, they're thinking in their mind, like, you know, I haven't said this yet to my spouse, but I just don't think our marriage is going to last. I don't think uh, it's sustainable. I think there we're we're one big blow up away from something going down that road or divorce happening. And I just want to encourage you to number one, I would open up a conversation with God and your spouse about this. If that's something that's a reoccurring thought to you, and if you have a fear that's inside of you that mm-hmm. you're thinking that divorce is always going to be at your doorstep, have a conversation with your spouse, pray about it with your spouse, and and just be open in that line of thought. Like, hey, this is what's happening every time we get in an argument. I have a spirit of rejection or I have a spirit of fear that's that's come upon me that says every time we get in a fight, you're going to ask me for a divorce. Yeah. And again, that gives an, the spouse an opportunity to reaffirm their love, reaffirm their commitment to their marriage, um, and hopefully put those, you know, kind of quash those fears down. Yeah. And I think speaking to someone who went through divorce, that was my fear. Yeah. That was my fear in our marriage a lot of times was that Scott was going to divorce me when we went through our litigation season, which we talk about, um, in the book and our, our book blended and redeemed. And we've talked about on the podcast, mm-hmm. that was a fear too. It was, he didn't sign up for this, 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 you know, he's not going to hang around. This has been too, um, harmful for him. It's been too hard for him. It's been too hard for our blended family. You know, he's going to leave. Like that mm-hmm. was, 
an ongoing fear. But what I had to realize is that wasn't the voice of God Hmm. and fear is not from God. I had to realize that that was a lie from the enemy. And once Scott and I began to talk about these things and we started to see um, a counselor, I first started to see a counselor for myself Mm -hmm. and then we started to go as a couple. And so I was able to process and work through those things um, and find freedom in that area and truly know that, you know, that was not your heart. That was, that was not the intention behind us getting married, Mm -hmm. that that was just really taking off the table, that it was not going Mm -hmm. to be an option for us. And so, you know, guys, here's some free counseling right here. Whenever, you know, just imagine what could happen if you and your spouse use a different approach. So one thing that we've learned and what um, we try to teach other couples whenever we're counseling with them is when, when you're in a season like this and you're maybe you've had a heated argument or you're just not getting along and this is something that uh, has become an issue instead of using the word divorce, we want to encourage you, you know, in heated moments, you can look to your spouse and you can say, I love you. I trust you but I'm going to need some time to process this alone because oftentimes in, in heightened emotional situations, um, we will say things and do things that we never thought that we would. Mm -hmm. And that's when we can accidentally say the D word. Right. Um, but if you can feel yourself getting worked up, if you have the self-control, um, to say, you know what, I don't see this going in a good direction. I'm, I know that I'm going to say something Mm -hmm. that is going to hurt you. I love you please know that you can trust me and I trust you, but I need time to process this alone and then come back together with you. And as the spouse receiving that, instead of provoking your spouse and saying, no, I want to talk right now. I think we really have to do a Holy spirit gut and heart check moment in that and lay down our pride and be like, okay. And, and give that to your spouse, allow them to have that time so that you, so that when you come back from when you're out of a situation of being emotionally, Mm -hmm. you know, there's all that emotion going on and you're more calm, then you can have a more level headed conversation. Yeah. On the same note, I want to draw kind of a parallel universe of like, imagine this scenario. You're, you're, you've been in a car accident and you're in the hospital and you're laying in the hospital bed and in walks in the doctor and the doctor looks at you and says, Hey, I know you're banged up, but you're going to be just fine. Imagine the weight that, that flows off of you in those situations. When we're in an argument with our spouse, you know, we don't want our marriage to end, but you're always maybe wondering like, Hey, does that cut lead to the infection that then spreads to my entire body that kills me? You know I mean? That's where people go. So I love what you said about, you know, the way you convey that, but you know, imagine you said, I love you. I know we're not getting along right now, but I'm committing to our marriage and we'll work this out. It's a disarming factor that you say to your spouse in in the arguments. Yeah. You know, it's in those argument times when things are getting a little heated and say, listen, I love you. We're going to work this out. We may not be getting along right now, yeah. but we're going to get through this. Yeah. We're, we're going to move through this. We're going to take one step of healing. Maybe the next step is, hey, we're going to go see a counselor, but we're going to do that. But you speak commitment and covenant uh, in your marriage. Absolutely. Um, you know, so guys, if you're struggling in this area, we just want to leave you with a few, just, you know, four, four tips of encouragement. Um, you know, you know, in words that seem to be your weapons of choice, we want to encourage you to take the following ap- actions. So one, and you guys know we're big on prayer, pray, because ultimately you need to talk those feelings out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you know, talk those feelings out with the one who created and blessed your marriage. And that's God. That's the Holy Spirit. I always talk about getting into the presence of God. You guys, God cares the most about the character of our heart. And when we're in seasons of pain or disagreement, Mm -hmm. there's a lot going on in our heart. There's things that we may be harboring in there, resentment, anger, bitterness. So we need to ask God to reveal those things, repent uh, for, you know, the negative thoughts or the judgment or the things Mm -hmm. like that that's going on. Um, And then apologize and ask for forgiveness. You know, whether that's you or that's your spouse, being laying down your pride and being humble enough to say, you know what, I I was wrong Mm -hmm. and I'm sorry. Scripture tells us that God opposes the proud but gives grace and favor to the humble. Mm -hmm. Um, The negative words that we can say not only you know, can cause a wound, but also a barrier in your heart. And apologizing is the first step in healing that hurt. It may take time for your spouse to lower their guard again. Um, but 
you know, understand that you can demonstrate mm-hmm. your love by being patient. It's a fruit of the spirit mm-hmm. um, and being patient in that process. Yeah. The next is ask God to strengthen you. Yeah. You know, you go to the gym to work out to strengthen your body. What are you, what are you doing to strengthen your resolve in your marriage? I mean, marriage is tough. It is a lot of seasons. Yeah. It is like season upon season upon season that, you know, some are really difficult. And I know in blended families, we we have multitude of seasons because we're dealing with multiple type scenarios with mm-hmm. the kids and our kids and their kids. And mm-hmm. strengthen your resolve. Ask God to strengthen your resolve. Pray and and understand that, you know, your commitment to communication, your commitment to using the right words, it needs to have some Holy Spirit driven behind it. You're going to yeah. need that yeah. uh, to kind of move you through that. And then when you are going through a, a difficult time, again, reaffirm your commitment to each other, seek and speak life in each other. Yeah. Um, and if it's continuous, go to a counselor. We're, we're both counselors and, um, we're big on biblical counseling. So don't be in that season where you're like, Hey, this keeps rehappening all the time. And these thoughts keep rehappening and our fights don't get any better. So go see a Christian counselor, go find somebody who can help you work through whether that's some anger that you have in your own heart and that keeps boiling out in communication yeah. or some issues that you guys have faced that you just haven't quite moved on from. So going and seeking biblical counseling is a big part of that. Yeah, you guys, and as we're wrapping up on this, you know, one thing that came to mind was in the book of Proverbs, which you read from earlier, it's the book of wisdom, y'all. It's Mm. so amazing. Um, It says that uh, death and light are in the power of the tongue, but it also tells us that gracious words are a honeycomb sweet to the soul and health to the bones. And the the word divorce is not sweet to the soul and Mm -hmm. has no place in our marriage. So again, when, whenever we can come to an agreement. And I would say before you get married and maybe you've been married 15 years and Mm -hmm. this is something that's been going on. You guys, it's a perfect opportunity to sit down and just say, you know what? I I don't want to, we don't, let's take this word out of our, out of our home. Let's take it out of our marriage and just, um, you know, come together and make that agreement with one another. Yeah. Pray about it. Um, and speak life over your, over your spouse and over your marriage and reaffirming your choice to marry them and why mm. you married them. I think it's interesting whenever we're coaching or counseling couples sometimes, um, and they're on the brink of divorce and it's like, Hey, like, I want you to tell me husband, I want you to tell me why you married your wife. What made you mm. fall in love with her from the beginning? And it really just that question alone, you guys, it takes people into a, it, it takes them back and it, it, it removes almost everything that like they've yeah. gone through. You know, when you go back and you think of why you first got married, your why behind that and your why behind not only your marriage, but your family, mm-hmm. um, it changes everything. And so, yeah. you know, just remaining steadfast in your commitment together um, and just remembering that your words have power. Yeah. I want to, I want to close with this, this, this comment to you guys. I, I'm, I'm thinking that somebody's going to see this podcast and they're going to click on it because they see the word divorce. Mm-hmm. And we know a lot of blended families listen to our podcast because they are in, you know, really heat seasons or wilderness seasons, or they're really struggling in their marriage. I mean, yeah. the, the, they're trying their hardest, but at the end of the day, they just haven't seen the breakthrough that they want. Yeah. So if you're listening to this podcast and you've been in this situation where you feel like divorce is imminent or it's just something that keeps creeping up in your marriage, I just want you to take a second. I want you to, everybody's got a phone, so let's text. Let's just text our spouse. And I just want you to text them and say, hey, I love you, I'm committed to our marriage. Whatever we're going through right now, we're gonna work through and we're gonna do it together. Yeah. Send that text to your spouse and watch the Holy Spirit start working in your marriage. It's good. It's the first thing and maybe the best thing you can do to start things off on a different foot yeah. by confirming to your spouse that you're in this 100%, you know, whatever happens, you cannot get to the good stuff without going through the challenges too. Yeah. You, you, you just can't. You don't look in a marriage that's lasted 50, 60 years and go, was it always good? Yep. No, mm-hmm. it's good because you went through it together. It's good because yeah. you face things together. I know in our marriage, we've had a lot of challenges, but the fun part about it is, is that we get to wake up tomorrow or today yeah. and go, wow, what did we come through and how much do we love each other today yeah. and how much, uh, how much fun is this going to be for us? So I hope that this has encouraged you guys. Yes. I hope that 
you're feeling the Holy Spirit move because it may be that one thing that does save your marriage. So if you haven't already, uh, the book Blended and Redeemed is Vanessa and I's uh, first book. It was a lot of fun writing this together, by the way. You want to talk about challenging yeah. your marriage. <laughs> Just joking. Build it. Just joking. Uh, it's the go-to field guide for the modern step family. It's, it's super exciting. The feedback has been wonderful. Thank you guys for those who have read it and, and yes. gave us feedback. But if and, you haven't got it already. Well, and we also have a study guide. Yeah. So if you want to do, a, yeah. you know, start a group at your church, even a home group. We've had a lot of people already starting groups. Yeah. We've had a bunch of different churches and pastors reaching out. So if this is something that you would like to see at your church, please contact us at info at blendedkingdomfamilies.com. Someone from our team will get in touch with you immediately and mm -hmm. um, get on the phone with you. We've been having a lot of phone calls and trying to get people started on the right foot so that they can get this resource into their church or into into a, like a life group. So Absolutely. To speak. And you can get it on Amazon. Go one swipe of the finger and it's at your door in two yes. days. So please go ahead and do that. Guys, thanks so much for joining in today. We hope that you've enjoyed this episode. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Be blessed in all that you do. Hey guys, so glad you were here with us today and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And you can find more resources from Blended Kingdom Families at blendedkingdomfamilies.com. Join us again next time as we hang out with more amazing podcast guests. And remember, nothing will be impossible with God.